Great. Good morning, Tokyo. Good morning to all Slush attendees. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to my talk. I hope you had an amazing conference until now. A big thanks from me to the conference organizers for organizing such an amazing event. Today, I talk about LISC and my key learnings I had by leading this decentralized movement. So, my name is Max Kordek. I'm co-founder, president, and CEO of the LISC Foundation. And before we start with the presentation, I'd like to just tell you all, if you have no knowledge about blockchain technology or cryptocurrencies in general, we at LISC, we have established the LISC Academy, which gives you a great entry point into this topic. And if you feel like you're missing some knowledge, feel free to go to this LISC Academy, which explains you everything about blockchain technology, about cryptocurrencies, about ICOs, and so much more with explanation texts, with infographics, with videos. And it's an amazing piece of work, so make sure to check it out. The presentation today is not really about LISC, about what we are building. It's more about the story behind it. But to give you a little bit more context of what LISC is, I want to give you a very quick overview. So LISC is running on its own blockchain. It's a cryptocurrency. And its token or ticker name is LSK. It's currently in the top 21 cryptocurrencies of every cryptocurrency in the world with a market cap of approximately $1 billion. And we at LISC, we are developing a platform to which JavaScript developers can go to to build their own blockchain applications. For that, we're working on different um, kind of tools, user interfaces, libraries to make blockchain development easy, fast, and fun. And here you see some of the applications we are working on. It's a big palette of tools, and it's getting bigger and bigger every day. Um, and yeah, just make sure to check it out. Feel free to play around with them, to install them, and give us always feedback to make it the best cryptocurrency in the space. So let's start with what you all came here for. The founding story of LISC. So LISC was founded by my partner Oliver Beddows and myself in early 2016. Oliver and I, we worked in another blockchain startup together before, and we thought that blockchain technology is a very promising but extremely hard to grasp um, topic, okay? And it's extremely complex, and it is a technology where many complex fields are coming together, like cryptography, distributed networking algorithms, game theory, and so on. So that's why, in an effort to make it simpler, in an effort to make it faster and more fun to develop for it, we established the LISC Foundation. The LISC Foundation is based in Switzerland, Zug, and we created it in the beginning of um, well, in 2016 as well. And it's a non-profit entity. That means there's no interest behind it to generate as much money as possible. It's a non-profit entity with the goal to um, distribute and widen the influence of blockchain technology in today's world. To finance our goals, we did a crowd sale, or how we call it nowadays often an ICO, an initial coin offering, in which we collected 14,000 Bitcoin. Back then, that were around 6.7 million Swiss francs. In yen, that's around 750 million. And at that time, it was the second, second biggest crowd sale in history in the blockchain world. And these funds are being used entirely on LISC. That means for marketing, development, operations, legal topics, and so on and so forth. But today, um, thanks to several re, um, investments, the diversification strategies, and of course the increased Bitcoin price. From the initial 6.7 million Swiss francs, the value increased, and we have approximately 200 million Swiss francs available to build this project. And these numbers are a little bit outdated because the presentation was being worked on a few days ago, and right now everything is going down like a rock, but you get the drift. Um, we have a lot of funding in order to execute our vision. That's how it all started, but let's talk about what happened in the last two years. 
This is my favorite part of the presentation because it just shows that a lot of hard work can actually achieve something. So achievement number one. Today we are working with a wide net of many collaborators from all around the world. Um, here you see a selection of those. For example, Expand Online from the Netherlands. They're working with us and supporting us in SEA, SEO, analytics, marketing, and so on. Tycho Nauten from Germany, they're supporting us in user experience, user interfaces. They did our just recently launched rebranding, and they're doing all things design. Vexman from the United States and from Ireland, they're helping us in our public relations strategy and how we communicate to the outside world. So you see that it's not only the Lisp Foundation, it's many, many companies around the world coming together to work on this movement. And the main contractor of all those is Lightcurve, which is based in Berlin, Germany, and were also, was also founded by Oliver and myself, because we want to develop this software and we want to market it in the first years ourselves in order to give it like the real push, in order to make it a widespread success. Currently, Lightcurve consists of approximately 40 employees, and we have the goal to double this size this year. These employees are working exclusively on Lisp. That means everyone is full-time contributing. We are still looking for many, many more people, especially for cryptographers and designers and QA engineers. So if this profile fits any one of you and you want to move to Berlin, feel free to apply to careers at lightcurve.io. That's achievement number two, establishing an amazing startup in one location with a team culture and a spirit to push this movement forward. Achievement number three is development activity. So DAPL is like an independent, I think Chinese-based rating agency who is researching the development activity of various blockchain projects around the globe. And they just did one new um, rating round, and in this one, Lisp has the most active development and the most frequent development of any cryptocurrency in the world. I'm super proud of my team that they're putting so much effort into that um, in order to really develop what needs to be developed in order to build our platform we promised our initial coin offering investors to build. Achievement number four is our rising influence in the space by going to conferences, by being active on social media, by spreading ideas others might have not thought about yet. And according to Rise Global, which is like a ranking site for influence in the blockchain space amongst others, we are one of the top trendy most influential blockchain companies in the space. I'm not talking about cryptocurrencies only here, but it's in general blockchain companies. So that means also PR, exchanges, and other companies in the space. Massive success for us. It shows that through the time we climbed up the ladder, um, which is mainly thanks due to the community and the team behind Lisp. And the last, last achievement is real world get togethers. It's conferences and events we attend, but also we um, let's say, create ourselves, coordinate ourselves. Here you see our relaunch event from just a few weeks ago in which we presented our new identity, our new branding, and our new design. And in this hall you see here, there were 500 people present, and over the course of the evening, 45,000 people watched online and became a part of this evening. And for us, it was just a huge success for our first real life event which we planned um, and that's why we want to repeat that because it's not only software for us it's something where people collaborate where people coming together and where we talk face to face with interesting uh, individuals or with individuals who are curious about this new technology so this is achievement number five amongst many many more we had which just shows for me that blockchain startups can arrive in the real world and that they can make an impact and are here to stay. If we are talking about the vision we have at LISC, then for me, it's very quickly told. So we at LISC, we envision a future in which blockchain technology supports existing infrastructures 
by making them more global, more transparent, and more reliable. Ultimately, we want to make this world more decentralized and let the crowd take back control again. We don't want that companies soak up all the control. We want that people have it again. And our hope is that we are building, or that the software and the platform we are building and the tools for developers we are building is helping humanity or individuals at one point in their lives. I think that's the goal for every startup, but because we are decentralized, for me it feels like even closer to the heart of the people because everyone can come together and can support us in this movement. But we cannot change this world alone. It's not on our shoulders alone. Like I said, it's on all of us. And therefore, we have created the LISP ecosystem, which we are striving to make the de facto standard for blockchain development in JavaScript. And this will be our way to invite people into the LISP ecosystem to collaborate, to work together, to create a better future together. But this future I'm talking about, it's, it's not coming easily, you know? Um, there are many, many challenges on the road ahead. It, in the past two years, we have encountered some of these challenges, which I want to talk about five today. So, being a startup in the blockchain space is something different because as soon as you did your ICO, you have a community, you have investors, you have people who rely on you, you have to keep communication high, you have to work on PR, you have to get into news journals and, and articles, you have to develop your software every single day while doing all of that on the side. And development, especially in the blockchain space, is also something so much more complex, so much more time intensive that as soon as you finish your ICO, you have like a thousand tasks which act like a wall. So in my opinion, that's one of the key problems I, ICO startups encounter, that as soon as the ICO stops, they see, oh damn, there are so many things now to do. Let's clean it up. Let's take care of that, but then it's often taking a few months until they're really up and running. And one big distraction all these startups face on this journey is the market, the prices. And it was a challenge for us as well, for our team, for our community, who were often getting distracted by the markets and the price. But we learned quite quickly, it doesn't matter. Focus only on technology and marketing, to get real world adoption, it's not where the price is today, it's where the technology will be soon in the future. And this is an advice I can give to entrepreneurs every single day. Seriously, don't get influenced by the price, stick to your product and make it a success. That's so much more important than a higher price, which might just be a quick pump and dump. Challenge number two which we met is to be everywhere. Um, or should I rather say, to build a team which is everywhere. I come not really from the startup space. Before Lisk, I was just a student, but I always believe in people coming together in one location. And that's why I set it as one of our priorities to build a local team in one, in one city. And we chose Berlin for that, and this turned out to be a challenge. People think that just because the technology is decentralized, the team can be two. But for me, it never worked so well because at the end we are building a company, we are building a real product which needs to be pushed really, really hard in order to let it progress and let it gain real world adoption. So we cannot have individuals sitting in the United States, in Mexico, in China, in Japan, in, and all over Europe. We need them in one room to discuss these great ideas together and come up with solutions. It takes longer to build it, but it's worth it in my opinion. And if you're building a culture around it, a spirit, then these people are also so much more incentivized to make it happen. And what you will get at the end is a highly efficient and very motivated team. And in my opinion, that's worth more than anything else. Then something I hear very often is, but blockchain is different. And this is the third challenge I present to you today. 
it's ignoring regular startup practices just because you believe blockchain is different. And to be 100% honest, it might move faster, this industry, than any other industry in the world. And it might have or has its special attributes, but at the end of the day, it's not that different at all. Um, and that's why, in my opinion, it's very important to stick to the best practices previous entrepreneurs have taught us in many, many years of their own experience, which they collected by building their own million or multi-billion dollar companies. Um, we should not forget that at the end, yes, it's a new technology, but the company behind it is still a regular company. The fourth challenge is to focus on key markets. I told in the beginning that as soon as you do your ICO and finish it, suddenly you have like hundreds of fields you have to take care of. Um, and for me, it's another challenge now to be everywhere in the world, in every industry, in every country, on every website, and so on. And this is a battle you can only lose, in my opinion. So what we came up with is that you really need to stick to key markets, let's say a key industry or two or three, and a few countries in the world to go really, really hard at. We at List, for example, chose Japan as one of our key markets to focus on because we as a team just love the country itself, but it also has an amazing promise for cryptocurrencies overall. So advice, stick to key markets and conquer them before you just decide to be all, like, all over the place, but not really at any place. The last challenge, um, it's one I mentioned briefly already and which is often being overseen is that maintaining an always on immutable network is something people not really did before in history. So what is it like to maintain an always on immutable network? You cannot just take off for five minutes, fix something and that's it. It's hard, it's nerve wracking, it's exhausting, it takes a lot of time and dedication and that's why many projects, in my opinion, fail because they're getting hate and heat um, from every side and still have to deliver on top of that. And of course, investors always want everything yesterday. So what I can just um, recommend you to do is stick to the best practices, have a very slow development approach, don't do too much at once, and just believe in yourself and your vision. At the end, you are the entrepreneur who is building this software platform, who are leading or who is leading this movement. So it's all up to you. That's it. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thanks so much for listening to it. I soon have a Q&A session here as well in the Slush Cafe. I hope to see you there. Thank you very much.